with Paddle TV with another in-depth gear review. And in this video, I am reviewing this sucker, the Piranha Scorch X, or Scorch 10, whatever you want to call it. Now, I don't get to review too many whitewater boats, and that makes me a little sad because you know, my roots are in whitewater. I started whitewater paddling when I was 14 years old, and that was over 30 years ago to date me. Uh, and, you know, for the first 10 years, that's all I did. All I cared about was whitewater paddling, and that's all I thought existed. Since then, my horizons have expanded greatly, and I enjoy all types of paddling, but I still love whitewater. And so I'm really excited to get this boat on the water, give it a good whirl. So. Before I do though, let me tell you a bit more about the Piranha Scorch X. The Piranha Scorch X retails for 1800 US dollars. It's 10 feet long, it's 25 and a half inches wide, it weighs 54 pounds or 24 and a half kilos, it has a max capacity of 250 pounds or 115 kilos, and its primary use is river running. Its key features include full-size grab handles, a cut-off stern edge, tapered stern volume, stern kick rocker, and full-length rails. There's not a lot to talk about before I take this thing on the water and really give it a test, because that really will let me know how it performs, and that's probably what you're most interested in hearing about. What I can tell you just looking at it is it's typical piranha. And the Piranha boats are just solidly built. Everything is everything is solid. The, the the security handles, the grab handles, the the outfitting, everything looks and and feels really solid. So there's no concerns whatsoever there. Uh, the real question here is how does it perform on the water? I'm on the Ottawa River right now. It's pretty early in the season, so the water's quite high right now. Typically, the Ottawa River wouldn't be a great place to test the creaky. Uh, characteristics of this boat, but there are a few creek lines to be had at this water level, so I should be able to, to do some testing there. That being said, there's no big waterfalls here, so I won't be able to give it that full test, but there's a lot of great white water here, and I will be able to get a great feel for what this boat is all about, and let you know how it deals with big water as well as the, the rockier stuff. So I'm gonna get this boat on the water, hope that the rain holds off, and give her a good old Ottawa River test. Well, that was a fun trip down the river. I love getting on the river, but I love testing new boats uh, as well. And really doing, I mean, Otto River is my backyard river. And so getting to do surf waves, run lines, that kind of stuff, the, uh, things I know very well, but doing it in, in different boats and see how they react is it's really, there are neat insights to come from that. And let me share some of those with you. Um, let's start with comfort with the Scorch X. Now, what can I say? This is a comfortable boat. Uh, I was in this boat for uh, a few hours, didn't have any need to get out of this thing. I love the outfitting that come with Piranha boats. The seat's very comfortable. The thigh hooks are really comfortable. The back band and the ratchet system they have for the back band to tighten it up. Everything's great. It comes with an outfitting kit where you can place foam, a couple of, you know, one or two layers of foam under the seat to raise your center of gravity if you want, uh, if you want to do that, if you feel you're too low in the boat. Um, I put uh, a little bit of foam in there because I like having a higher center of gravity to get more leverage. Um, you give up a little bit of stability for that, but in this boat, as I'll talk about, not a problem. Um, yeah, and then the hip pads too that comes with shims, simple to add some shims. I added one shim on each side and I fit beautifully in this thing. Uh, it's got a bulkhead in here, so big fat platform to put your 
feet um, and with a big, even you put a pad on that bulkhead too. So comfort wise, I mean, I loved it. Now something to note is that the Scorch X only comes in one size and it fits like the Scorch Medium. Now I typically don't think of myself as uh, someone who paddles a medium kayak. I usually paddle a large, but this one fit really well for me. Uh, could you be much more, much bigger than I am? Well, probably there was more, there was plenty of foot room. The bulkhead could go back a little, little further. Now I'm six foot two, um, 195 pounds, uh, and I've got a 34 inch inseam. And so, you know, you could be bigger than I am and be comfortable in this kayak. Absolutely. Something else that's worth mentioning about, uh, comfort is comfort in carrying. And that's something in all kayaks aren't the same. This kayak though is a comfortable kayak to carry. Uh, even though it's not a light boat, well, no whitewater kayak is light unless you get a carbon boat, but it balances well on the shoulder. My pet peeve, and sometimes it's unavoidable, but kayaks that don't balance well on your shoulder. So you're always lifting it or pulling it down, trying to balance it while you're actually carrying the load as well. And that's tough. This one, no problems. It balanced beautifully. So anyway, there you go. Now let's talk stability. <laughs> I mean, this is where this boat really shines. This thing is such a stable platform. It's surprising how stable it is considering it's no, usually stability comes from width, like in, with recreational or flat water kayaks, the wider the kayak is, the more stable it is. Well, this isn't really any wider than any other whitewater kayak, but the feeling of stability, the feeling, the confidence you get from this boat it is truly uh, remarkable, especially when you put it on edge. This thing is, you know, it's stable, uh, when it's flat, but you put it on edge and it just feels like it, you get rejected. It's not going to tip over. It's a very confidence inspiring feeling when you're paddling this thing. So high marks for stability. And, you know, I'll talk about how I felt that in a bit, uh, but let's jump right into performance. Now, when it comes to performance, I mean, this thing's a, t it's a 10 foot long kayak and that's longer than most whitewater kayaks these days. And so you expect to get more speed from it and you do, you get a little bit more speed from it, but that is balanced by the fact that it has a lot of rocker curvature of, of the hull from bow to stern. And that makes it, you lose a little bit of speed for the length of it because of that rocker, but you gain maneuverability and it has some real benefits when you're river running, which is what I'll talk about next. So for river running, because of all that rocker and because of the speed of this kayak, you can literally skip over things. You can skip over, get your nose up and over holes. You can get, you launch off, off of waves. Keeping this nose up is not a challenge at all. I wish I had a, a waterfall here on the Ottawa to test this thing on um, because you know, that would be the ultimate test for how well the nose stays up. But that being said, I have no doubt that this thing is a boof machine. It's just the way it stayed on top of waves and holes, it's going to boof really well. And the extra speed that you get from the extra length just means that you're going to fly off drops that much better. So I can't wait to actually test this thing on a creek, but I didn't have that opportunity today. Now the, the play boater in me, I love having a slicey stern. And that's why play, I mean, I'm a play boater. That's my background, but I still love creek boating. But anytime I hop into a, a boat with a big volume stern, I always, part of me is like, oh, I wish it was slicey so I could engage that stern a bit, use it to help me make moves. But that's not what this boat is about. You know, this stern is not something you can really sink. But this is the kind of boat and that you take paddling places, you don't want it to sink. <laughs> and so, uh, you know, that, that was a personal thing I had to overcome paddling a river like the Ottawa is, hey, this is not a slicey stern at all, but this boat was specifically designed not to have a slicey stern to be more forgiving. Now for creaking uh, or drops, you know, I'm on the Ottawa, so I didn't have a lot to, to test it on, but I did have one drop, Elevator. And Elevator is a, is a neat rocky drop. It was at a, a good level, but a level where you're feeling the rocks. And I did feel the rocks as I was coming over that thing. I actually got slowed down a bit, and then I went over the drop and didn't really have a chance to get a 
boof stroke, but it didn't matter. I had total confidence in this thing as I was going over. The bow has just got so much rocker. I went over and it just boom, boom, boom. You know, it just flowed through. I just had to basically help it a little on its journey and be ready to brace. But there were some, even some rocks that kicked me uh, to the side on elevator. And what I, once again, was really surprised about was the stability. When it was on edge, boom, it kind of rejected. You know, boom, you're not gonna flip, you stay upright. It was a small test, but a great test of this thing's creak ability. Top marks there with what little testing I was able to do here. Now, playboating, you're not getting this boat to playboat, but hey, you're running a river. Of course, you're gonna to wanna to surf a wave when you pass a wave. So how does it surf? Well, it's not a fast surfer. It's got so much rocker, and so that doesn't make it a fast boat on a wave, but it also, it makes it able to catch a lot of waves. That being said, is if the wave's breaking at all, because of the big volume stern, it's impossible to cut that stern under. And so once it starts getting taken, once you start carving off the wave, there's no real recovery in this boat. You're coming off that wave. It's not a high performance surf machine whatsoever, but it was fun. Now in a hole, different story. Um, this is a boat that was designed to skip over holes stay out of holes, <laughs> you know? This was not a boat designed to be in a hole. And that was apparent immediately. When I started, when I was side surfing this thing, it was a, it was a rough ride. It was tough to move around. Uh, and the biggest reason for that is because of all the rocker in this boat, all the volume. When you're on edge, there's a lot of your boat that's touching the water. And so, all this water coming downstream in a hole is hitting a huge part of your boat. It's, and it's catching the ends, the stern and the bow, and it's gonna be a bucking wild ride. It's not, it's not a play boat in a hole. So this is not a boat to really play in holes. This is a boat to skip over holes, avoid holes, and it does an incredible job of that. So who is this kayak for? Well. The Scorch X, I would say, it really is for anyone from a beginner to an expert paddler. Anyone can hop in this boat and feel comfortable and confident. So it really is more a matter of what type of paddling is it for. And I would definitely say that this is a boat that's designed for, for lower volume river running, creek boating. It's not a, a specialist in big volume, definitely not a play boat. Um, yeah, a low volume river runner and creek boat, but, for any level of kayaker because you, it's such a confidence inspiring and forgiving kayak. In terms of value, well, it's $1,800 US. I mean, that might be a hundred bucks more than some other whitewater kayaks, but I mean, all whitewater kayaks are in that range of 1600 to 1900, unless you get a carbon boat. And so value isn't even worth um, talking too much about, uh, especially when you know that all the outfitting they didn't skimp anywhere. This kayak is just solid. The, even the, the grab handles, the security handles, the outfitting, the uh, ratchet system, everything about this kayak screams quality. I even like the water bottle holder, and I don't say that very often. Prana makes a good water bottle holder in their whitewater kayaks, and not many other kayak companies do. Um, yeah, all in all, great boat, great value. You know, whether it's the right boat for you, Depends on the type of paddling you're doing and what you want from a whitewater kayak. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Now, this boat has been out for about a year. And so a lot of you have had a lot of time in this boat. And so I'd love to hear your comments, your feedback about this kayak. Leave a comment down below, share it with the community and stay tuned for more paddling tips, gear reviews and paddling adventures. Speaking of which, I'm going to go on a paddling adventure right now. It's early. I'm going to do another lap of the Ottawa. <laughs>